It is the morning after Russell Northrup and several other Fond du Lac Reservation band members okay. harvested ironwood poles needed to construct a wigwam, and today they will begin the build. The chosen site for the wigwam is a field adjacent to the Fond du Lac Language House. The first step is to determine the size. Well, we needed more cultural settings in the area, and this seemed to... I had an idea, I built a couple more earlier, and uh, they wanted to expand their cultural. So I approached them with the idea of building a wigwam out here on the language grounds. This one here is approximately uh, 12 by 15 feet. I had my family come and, come and help me. I had my grandson Julius and my daughter, Naomi, my other grandson, Cade, and my wife, Deb. I try to teach my my kids and grandkids, you know, about the way of life, you know, we live, you know, um, from maple sugar onto this, you know. I ain't gonna be around forever, I told them, and so somebody has to carry on these things, you know, and you gotta learn it. And so they've been going along with me and collecting bark and collecting ironwood and learning the steps involved into creating something like this, you know. So I feel it's gonna continue on. Once the perimeter of the wigwam or waganagon is outlined, the next step is to pound holes in which the ironwood poles will be situated for the frame. To be able to, be able to, uh, keep some of these activities alive and also be able to benefit from the use of the land and a lot of our natural and wild foods. So I like to be able to let folks have the knowledge that it takes to be able to do some of these types of traditional activities because uh, you can still use them in the present and in the future. Created some at home. We have ceremonies for our kids. Um, when they're first born, you know, they have to touch the ground in the first four days. Uh, we created one at home. It was a larger size. It was, wasn't birch bark. We just used tarp and insulation. And um, it was uh, 15 by 30. We had it heated in the winter. My grandson was born on the 5th of January, so he was able to touch the ground without freezing. When I start making them, you know, I, you're able to sit back and look at it and you hear stories from from your elders and from, well, people older than me that, you know, your grandparents were, were born in one of these and uh, so then you start figuring out how you're going to make it, you know, how did, how did they make it, you know, how did they insulate it, how did they keep warm in the winter, you know. All these things going through your mind and you're starting to figure, you know, how, to, how it's going to work. And that's how, I, that's how I created this project, I mean, what I'm doing right now. The poles are then bent toward the middle and tied together using twine. Basswood strips would normally be used, but the twine will work just as good. With the frame complete, it is now time to add birch bark panels to build up the walls around the wigwam or waganagon. It's a ground up process as the panels must overlap to protect the inside from the outside elements. The Fond du Lac Cultural Center and Museum documented the build from start to finish. How does that make you feel when you, you have your uh, daughter involved, your wife, uh, your grandsons? How does that make you feel? I'm proud of them that they they could put up with me. <laughs> um, they're doing a good, they do a good job, you know, they're, they pick up pretty fast and they know what I want, you know, it's, it's almost like they try to read my mind what's next, you know, and they, they keep me motivated. My granddaughter, my daughter keeps me motivated. Well, let's keep going, keep going. I can't take breaks. So that's the way it works out, you know, and I, I enjoy that, the pushing. She pushes the grandsons and her son. I wanted to show our, show the grandkids that it's all right, you know. You know, there's no two alike. 
you know, you can go to different reservations, you'll see them different, made differently, you know, and um, that's what I told the grandkids, you know, be proud of what you do, trust in your work, you know, I could have them crawl all the way across the top of one of these, and, um, you know, I said, you know, that's you having faith in yourself and what you're doing, and so it's mostly teaching the kids to have faith in themselves. So we like to keep a lot of these cultural arts alive. Personally, it, it makes me feel really good because we work hard as a Fond du Lac family. So it's a big plus for us personally, and it's a big plus as a, commu in a, as a community also. It's a process on building, you know. It's believing in yourself that you could do something. You look at your look at your history and you know this is where your family came from you know you had grandparents born in these you had parents born in these be proud of where you came from and these were homes these were our homes and this is where we grew up